Hey folks, Chris Deleon here. We're going to uh, start with a blank text file. We're going to make a quick game today. This one's going to be a snake-like game. Uh, and that's going to be the kind of game that used to be on cell phones before smartphones. Since I'm a dinosaur. But the original version of the snake game was also an arcade or PC game or something from the 70s. Uh, so, okay, so we're going into here. We're going to do canvas equals uh, document dot get element by ID. It's most verbose and ugly where we have to be doing a little bit of interaction between the HTML and the JavaScript. Um, once we get this stuff sort of set up, it's not so bad. Uh, get context, and that's going to go to graphics context or buffer. And then we've got uh, document dot add event listener. Let's set up our keyboard hooks. Key down is all we really need since this game has momentum, like a function called key push. If I can spell push correctly. Uh, let's go and get that stub set up as well as uh, start off our game on interval timer to call a game function 15 times every second. That's milliseconds, so we're dividing it into it. And so using low frame rate, since snake works on a very low frame rate, we're going to have x velocity and y velocity values for our snake. Part of the thing about snake game, right, is that you just push the keys to make the character move, and it keeps on moving with momentum. Uh, we're going to switch on the key codes. Some people don't like switch cases. I don't like some people. But more importantly, uh, key codes in particular are a great case for switch cases. It's kind of a natural fit, like peas and carrots. And uh, I'm also going to say, even though I don't have all the key codes memorized because I'm not a nerd. Okay, I'm not. I'm a nerd. I'm not that much of a nerd. Um, but after a thousand hours training people one-on-one -on -one and game development stuff, you start to figure out that like 37 through 40 is the arrow keys and it's left and then clockwise because uh, you need the kind of stuff on top of your head when you're walking people through stuff on Skype. So, okay, so there's our input now handled. We also want to have our player positions equals PY equals, let's start in the middle of the world. I'm thinking the middle world because I'm thinking 20 by 20. So grid size and tile count will both be 20 because 20 times 20 is 400. And let's also have an Apple X and an Apple Y as our goal, which will start at 15, 15, just to keep things simple. So player X is going to plus equal X velocity. And then player Y is going to plus equal Y velocity. Let's implement some wrap for those. So if PX is goes less than zero, uh, some, some snake games wrap, some games of snake don't. This game's going to wrap. Uh, so, you know, there it is. Now, again, I'm going to warn, I can't say it enough times because I never have times I mentioned the previous video. People still like seem to got confused. This is not meant to be a follow along tutorial at home. Uh, obviously, I do those kind of things. They are much longer form and more detailed than this. So that's going to wrap the Y. Uh, let's also do a context.fill style equals black. Uh, but I will say, too many people who come from the other end of the spectrum, where they, they have some experience, maybe first year computer science students or whatever, or new to games, is the people who don't really have a sense for the fact that like there's a time and place for hacky, 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 hacky coding, right? That just because you can write rigorous code, and I can write rigorous code, and professionally I have, uh, it's also there's a time and place for writing some really just fast garbage. Because oftentimes, I'm a big believer in the Cerny method, which is a, built around the notion of rapid prototyping to prove concepts and throw away code bases, where it's really it's about standing up how quickly I can get this gameplay testable. Ooh, so we're going to need a trail here for our uh trail hold on yeah we need an array for our player because one of the things about a snake game right is it keeps track of all previous positions let's also keep a one called tail to be how long our tail is supposed to be trail dot length and so anyway there is value i'm a strong believer in the notion too of you like can't your brain's a terrible emulator is the way i like to explain it that if you try to close your eyes and play like pac-man or pong or breakout or something you can't Ooh, there's our x and y which remember part of the mechanics of a snake game is if you step in your tail, you're in trouble. So we can do that really easily here by doing this. So if it matches on X and it matches on Y, then tail is going to go back to equal to five. Um, speaking of it matching, we also need to check and see if we step on that apple. Oh no, equals five. If we step on the apple, then we want to uh, increase our tail length. Um, so tail plus plus. And as part of the two, we want to randomize that. So math.floor, so it's an exact integer. Uh, and this is going to be math.random, which is 0 to 1 times tile count on each axis. Uh, part of where I also got these sort of very, very rapid hacky demonstration techniques background. Uh, oh, we also just need to pile this on. Trail.push. I'm going to, I, for the most part, I'm trying to show some kind of language agnostic code. One exception here will be this rapid instantiation of an object literal. It's going to help us out here a little. Also, we're going to trim down the tail. So if tail.length is greater than tail after being penalized, it'll shave it back down and also keep it a consistent length as we play by shifting it off the end. Okay, so I think that's it for the code. Uh, game.html. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that your brain can't really simulate real-time live action gameplay. So if you're working on a game that's really strategic, then in that case, it is something you can paper prototype, you can board game prototype, etc. When it's a game that's really built around reaction times and angles and spatial layouts, I'm a believer you need it working on machine 
because the brain and turns and dice rolls and whatever can't adequately simulate that kind of stuff. Certain kinds of games can be, certain games can't be. I'm a pinball guy, that's my background, that's the type of arcade style gameplay I study. So I'm a big believer in you gotta build rapidly digital prototypes. So anyway, part of my prototyping background was uh, for seven months, I'm getting so long. Um, for seven months, I made an experimental gameplay pro- oh, I ate my tail, so I lost my link. So, hey, that part works. Um, experimental gameplay project every day for seven months. That's called the Interaction Artist Series. Those games are no longer online. Some of them are, uh, awful or offensive or other stuff, so I took them down. But they're all in Flash, so some browsers don't like them anyway. Uh, that was long- that was a decade ago. Um, so anyway, that's also part of why, since I spent 219 days making a digital playable game every night, got pretty used to hacking in addition to all the other- uh, rapid prototyping that I've done professionally or in my own projects, etc. So anyway, again, if you want to learn game programming, please don't use this code. I mean, you're welcome to. I'll put it up on the screen. So if you want to try to compare to it, you can kind of like give it a look. Can I just easily change my font size? There we go. I won't help you with this game, but I will help you over on codeyourfirstgame.com, which is really what this whole stunt is trying to encourage people to go check out. Well, that's going to be my instructor dashboard. We don't want that. Let me open this up in a different browser. Uh, codeyourfirstgame.com, free video course. I literally worked uh, in private training walked dozens of people through this exact content. We've now had over 50,000 people take this free course. You can do it in an evening, just need a free browser, standard Chrome, standard Internet Explorer, standard Edge, standard Firefox, whatever, Safari should work too. Uh, plain text editor, like I say, text edit. Uh, you can use Sublime Text if you're already happy as a, as a coder. Um, you can use whatever it is, Notepad will work. And I actually demonstrate this in Notepad just to show you, you can do it in Notepad. Uh, build, I gotta go pick up fiance. Uh, anyway, build games. I look forward to playing games in the future. Go to codeyourfirstgame.com. After you do that, if you want to figure out some more next steps, check out gamketo.com. That's G-A-M-K-E-D-O. There's no E in the middle. It's not game keto. Gamketo. And there you'll find a link with a discount to my second video course. Cover some 1980s style basic tile-based collisions for other kinds of mid-80s style games movie out of the 70s and the 80s. Then we have a worldwide practice club, Gamketo Club, entirely online. People building games together, learning a lot, having a ton of fun doing it. So look forward to seeing you there.